Thank you for joining us online for a workshop on completing your public school employee's retirement system service retirement application. To prepare for this instructional workshop, you should have the following items with you to fill out your application. A retirement application, and if you do not have one, you may go to the Forms and Publications tab at www.ers.ga.gov. After going to the Forms and Publications tab, you will select the Public School Employees Retirement System by clicking the PSERS link. The very first document that you are able to download is the Service Retirement Application. You will also need your retirement benefit estimate, a black pen, any applicable beneficiary information, such as your beneficiary's name, current address, and date of birth, and a voided personal check or your savings account information. The agenda for this session will be to cover all of the necessary considerations associated with completing your retirement application with the Public School Employees Retirement System. In the event that you do not need to hear all of the sections in this tutorial, the table of contents located at the left of the presentation will allow you to skip from one topic to the next so you can spend time on the information that is of most interest to you. The deadline for turning in your retirement application is a very important matter for you to understand. First, the Public School Employees Retirement System does not want to receive your application any sooner than 90 days from your intended retirement date. Also, the Public School Employees Retirement System does not want to receive your application any later than 30 calendar days prior to your retirement date. If your retirement application is turned in inside of 30 days from your intended retirement date, the Public School Employees Retirement System will not be able to put you onto payroll for your first month of retirement. Instead, during your second month of retirement, you will be paid twice. In the event that you are not paid your first month of retirement, you will need to pay any premiums for the state health benefit plan and your dental insurance directly to those providers. To begin completing your application, please turn to page 5. Page 5 is where you provide your basic personal information and retirement date. You will notice that halfway down the page, we will ask for your email address. Please provide us with your personal email address. Also provide us with a work phone number. If your work number is not the best number to contact you during the day, please feel free to provide us with a cell phone number. We want to make sure that we have a reliable way to contact you during the business day in the event that we have questions regarding your application. Please take a moment and complete page 5 through your current employer. As you move down towards the bottom of page 5, you are asked for an effective date of retirement. You will notice that your effective date of retirement is always the first of the month. Your retirement check will be paid at the end of that month, provided that your application has met all the proper deadlines to be processed. At the very bottom of page 5, you will see a box for service retirement. Please go ahead and check the box for service retirement. Before we move on, let's review what a service retirement is. A normal service retirement allows a public school employee's retirement system member to begin receiving a monthly benefit as early as the first day of the month on or after the 65th birthday of the member, provided that that member has at least 10 years of creditable service. A member may also take an early retirement. Early retirement is when the member chooses to retire and is at least age 60, but not yet age 65. That member must also have at least 10 years of creditable service. Under an early retirement, the member will have their monthly benefit reduced at a rate of 6% for every year they retire before the age 65. This reduction is prorated to the month, which works out to be one half percent for every month the member retires before age 65. For many, the most important aspect of filling out their retirement application is determining which payout option is right. 
Go ahead and turn to page 7 in your application, but before we complete page 7, we'll look at each payout option in depth. If you have your benefit estimate, now would be a good time to get it out so you can refer to it as we review the payout options. There are questions of a personal nature that many retirement applicants will want to consider regarding their pension benefits. These questions may revolve around providing for a beneficiary at the time of death and what that beneficiary will need to be financially comfortable. Also, how does Social Security fit into your retirement plans? If you are retiring before you are eligible to collect Social Security benefits, will your pension be enough to live on or will you plan to find another job? Keep these questions in mind as we review the payout options. Public school employees retirement system staff cannot instruct you on what option is best for you. They can only explain the available options. You may want to contact a financial planner to review all of your assets to help you make the best decision. Changing your payout option is only allowed under very limited circumstances. Therefore, selecting a payout option that suits your personal situation and lifestyle is significant. Once you complete your retirement application, you do have some wiggle room to make last-minute adjustments to your payout selection. A last-minute change to your payout option must be received in writing before your first retirement check is paid. If you are unmarried at the time of your retirement and select the maximum payment option for your retirement, and then you get married during your retirement, you have a six-month window to notify the public school employee's retirement system of your marriage, select a new payout option, and name your new spouse as the beneficiary for your retirement benefits. The first payout option you will see on both page 7 and your benefit estimate is referred to as the maximum option. The maximum payment option will provide the retiree with the greatest monthly benefit in retirement. However, at death, all payments cease. If the total amount of payments received by the retiree do not exceed the employee contributions account upon the retiree's death, the named beneficiary will receive the remaining funds as a lump sum payment. Option AA will allow the retiree to take a reduced monthly benefit for life. The reduction in the retiree's monthly benefit allows the named beneficiary or beneficiaries to receive a lifetime check upon the retiree's death equal to 100% of the benefit that the retiree was receiving. A living person must be named as a beneficiary for this payment. In the case of multiple beneficiaries being named, each beneficiary will receive a partial amount based on their respective life expectancies. Option AA is not an eligible payment if the named beneficiary is non-spousal and younger than the retiree by 10 or more years. Option AA will not allow the retiree to change the designated beneficiary after the PSERS payment has been received. Option AB is very similar to Option AA. The difference between option AA and AB is that AB pays half as much to the beneficiary. So instead of the beneficiary receiving 100% of the retiree's monthly check after the retiree's death, the beneficiary only receives 50% of the retiree's monthly check for life. Since AB pays half as much money as AA, the reduction to the retiree's monthly benefit is not as great as option AA. Option AC pays a reduced lifetime benefit to the retiree, and the lifetime benefit paid to the beneficiary is determined by the retiree at the time of retirement. The reduction to the retiree's monthly benefit will be based on the monthly benefit amount chosen by the retiree and the age of the chosen beneficiary. As is the case with option AA, this option may not be available if the named beneficiary is non-spousal and younger than the retiree by 10 or more years. Option AD is an option available to retirees who have named a non-spousal beneficiary that is 10 years or younger than the retiree. 
In the case of naming a beneficiary who fits that description, there may not be a payment available for option AA or option AC. Option AD will allow the retirement system to calculate the maximum monthly benefit available for the beneficiary and allow the beneficiary to receive that amount as a lifetime payment upon the retiree's death. Lastly, option B provides the retiree with a reduced lifetime benefit and depending on the time period selected, a limited benefit to be paid to the named beneficiary. Retirees have the choice to choose one of four payment methods on option B. Each of the four payments has a time period associated with it. There is a five year, a 10 year, a 15 year, and a 20 year payment option to choose from. If the retiree dies before the end of the time period chosen, then the beneficiary will assume receiving those retirement payments for the remainder of the period. Once the period is over, then payments from the retirement system will cease. If the retiree lives longer than the time period chosen, then no benefits are paid out to the beneficiary. As is with most of the other payments, the beneficiary must be a living person. However, this beneficiary may be changed at any time by the retiree after the first monthly payment is made. Now that we've reviewed the retirement options, please complete page 7 by indicating the retirement option that you would like. Be sure to only choose one of the payment options that is available to you. Please make sure to initial the bottom of the page and write the last four digits of your social security number and the date. The last four digits of your social security number, your initials, and the date will be required at the bottom of every other page on your retirement application. Page 9 is where you will designate beneficiaries for your retirement income benefits. You have the ability to name multiple primary and secondary beneficiaries. If you name your estate as the primary beneficiary, then there is no need to designate a secondary beneficiary. Please keep in mind that naming an entity such as an estate or a trust or a charity as your primary beneficiary will not enable you to leave behind a lifetime payment to that beneficiary. If you choose to name a beneficiary other than your estate, you must include a secondary beneficiary. If you have questions concerning beneficiary payments associated with the payout option you've selected, you may skip back in the presentation to the payout option section for review. Now turn to page 11 in your retirement application. This page is for designating tax withholding, direct deposit, and other retirement check deductions. The top half of page 11 is where you will provide information for both federal and state income tax withholding on your retirement check. Please keep in mind that the Public School Employees Retirement System does not deduct state taxes for any other state than the state of Georgia. So if you move out of state, you should update your state tax withholding information. As you get towards the bottom of page 11, you will see the direct deposit information needed for the Public School Employees Retirement System to electronically deposit your monthly retirement funds into your checking or savings account. If you would like the funds deposited to your checking account, please make sure to attach a voided personal check to your retirement application. If you would prefer the funds be deposited to your savings account, please be sure to complete the required information for your savings account on page 11. The typical check deductions many retirees see on their retirement checks are federal taxes, state taxes, health insurance premiums, and dental premiums. Employees also have the option to have deductions made to their Georgia United Credit Union account or the Atlanta Postal Credit Union. Deductions for these credit unions do not roll over from your agency's payroll. To ensure deductions are taken out of your retirement check, you must first have an account established with the credit union, and you must fill out paperwork to ensure the deductions will be taken from your monthly retirement funds. Please contact the credit union for more information and to complete the paperwork to get this deduction set up.
There are also some things that are not deducted from your retirement pay that are worthy of mention. First, Social Security and Medicare taxes of approximately 7.65% do not come from your retirement payments. Charitable contributions, parking, any participation that may have been made in a 457 or a 403B plan through your employer will also not come from your retirement pay. Now turn to page 13 in your retirement application. Page 13 must be completed and notarized to be eligible to receive a monthly retirement benefit. Since the public school employee's retirement system must have the original notarized affidavit, you may not fax or email the affidavit to the retirement system. Along with the affidavit, you must provide a copy of a secure and verifiable document for identification purposes. A list of these documents is provided to you on page 12 of your retirement application. At the bottom of page 14, you've been provided a checklist to help you ensure you've completed all of the required information to successfully submit your retirement application. The final step in completing the retirement application is to complete page 15, the member acknowledgement. At the top of the page, you will want to fill in your last day of employment with your employer. Read the acknowledgement carefully. Sign the bottom of page 15 and provide the last four digits of your Social Security number and the date. This will finish the application process. Completing page 15 finishes the process of filling out your application. Please take a moment to compile pages 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15 together. These are the pages that must be submitted to the Public School Employees Retirement System for processing. You must submit your original application to the Public School Employees Retirement System to Northside 75, Suite 300, Atlanta, Georgia 30318. If you wish, you may choose to send your application via standard U.S. Postal Service or by certified mail or UPS or FedEx if you would like to receive a verification of when the document was delivered. It's up to you. Again, on your application, you want to make sure that you have initialed, dated, and put the last four digits of your Social Security number at the bottom of pages 7, 9, 11, and 15. Make sure you have chosen only one payment option on page 7. Make sure that you have attached a voided personal check on page 11 if you would like us to deposit your funds to your checking account. And make sure you have page 13 completed and notarized with a copy of one of the documents listed on page 12. Once the Public School Employees Retirement System receives your application, you will get an acknowledgement letter in the mail within two weeks. Now that we are finished with the application process, there is some information that we would like to share with you that might be helpful after you've retired. If you have yet to register to access your account online, we highly recommend you do so. This will allow you to see your monthly retirement pay stubs as well as make certain changes on your account. If over the course of your retirement you move or change bank accounts, or wish to change any sort of tax withholding information, you are able to do so online by accessing your retirement account at www.ers.ga.gov. Also, as a state retiree, you may register for the MORE discount program. Registering for MORE will provide discounts to retirees on certain goods and services. You may only register for MORE by going online. After you've retired, you may return to work as a public school employee's retirement system member. However, returning to work may be handled in a couple of different ways, depending on your age. If you are less than the age of 65 at rehire, you will automatically become an active member in the public school employee's retirement system upon rehire. Your retirement benefit will then be suspended, 
you will make employee contributions into the system and you will accrue additional creditable service. Once you retire again, the sum of your total creditable service will be used to determine your final retirement benefit. If you return to a public school employee's retirement system covered employment position after retirement and you are over the age of 65, you must choose whether to continue to receive your retirement benefit or to become an active member in the public school employee's retirement system again. If you choose to become an active member again, your retirement benefit will be suspended, you will make employee contributions to the system, and you will accrue additional creditable service. Once you retire again, the sum of all of your creditable service will be used to determine your final benefit. If you attain the age of 65 during your rehire period, you will have the opportunity to elect whether to continue as an active member or resume receiving your monthly retirement benefit based on your new total creditable service accrued up until the age of 65. If you choose to begin receiving your retirement benefit again, then you will no longer make employee contributions to the public school employee's retirement system or accrue any additional creditable service while you remain actively employed. You must have a one-month break in service between your retirement date and the date of your rehire. These stipulations only apply to returning to work as a public school employee's retirement system member. Any employment outside of the state, say with a private entity, is not subject to any of these rules. The Public School Employees Retirement System Board of Trustees will review plan funding on an annual basis and then make a determination if a COLA may be granted to retirees. Please do not assume COLA payments will be granted. The Public School Employees Retirement System would like all retirees to base their future financial plans off of the base benefit that is provided. Thank you for your time. We hope this session was helpful to you. The Employees Retirement System of Georgia developed this presentation to provide general information about your retirement benefits. In the case of any conflict between what is presented here and the laws governing this system, the law will take precedence.